All right, so this video um, is about the lab homework number five that's gonna be due tomorrow for some of you or Wednesday for the rest of you. Um, so this video is gonna be a little bit longer. There's a lot of pages to this lab homework. It's a little bit more involved, so I'll try to, to go as quickly as possible, but um, it is gonna take a little bit longer, so getting right into it. These first two questions, uh, you know, we've got some conversations going on here between Victor and Kate, and you sort of have to choose who you're gonna side with and then explain why you're siding with that one person. There's not necessarily one specific right answer we're looking for here. We're just looking for you to sort of, you know, come up with some evidence and reasoning or, you know, back someone up, uh, you know, in a, in a conversation. So the third one, uh, I did put a star next to this one. So this one might be a little bit more important. So definitely make sure you spend some time on this one. And here we've got, again, another conversation, but Victor says, I have, I just have to wait for the sugar cube to melt. And you'll notice that I put a box around the word melt uh, before I take a sip. And then Kate is going to sort of correct him or sort of say something to him. Um, and what we're asking you guys to do is put yourself in Kate's position. You know, say, uh, actually, Victor, this is really the way you should be thinking about it, or this is really the way that I think about it. Um, you know, sort of be contrarian. The next page is about drawing some pictures. Um, and so here, we're asking you to, you know, draw some pictures of what happens when salt dissolves and what happens when sugar dissolves. And I think it would be a good idea to, you know, indicate that positively charged circle is sodium negatively charged circle is chlorine. So here's my picture of my solid. I've got that lattice structure, positive, negative, negative, positive, so on and so forth. Um, for water, I'm gonna use triangles. I think that's a, a nice way to indicate that there's a difference and that we're talking about water molecules because in this picture, we're gonna be having to draw both water molecules and ions in the same picture. So a little key up here is nice. And the other thing that I've shown in here is this dotted lines between the water molecules. So this is, you know, my intermolecular bond or intermolecular force between two water molecules. And I think here in the question where it says, include your ideas about rearrangements of any chemical bonds in the salt and or sugar. Um, you know, I think that's really trying to talk about intermolecular forces, not bonds within the, you know, sugar molecule, for instance. So for the sugar molecule, uh, I'm just using a circle. And then again, I'm showing these dashed lines to indicate intermolecular bonds or intermolecular forces between the two sugar molecules, right? These sugar molecules will be attracted to one another. Um, to some extent, they'll be held together uh, and we wanna indicate that. So we can show, sort of show that our two pictures and then what happens after they mix. How are these water molecules gonna be interacting with these ions? How are the, these water molecules gonna be interacting with this sugar molecule? Um, what does the picture of that look like uh, on a small particle scale? All right, the next section at the top, we're asking you to sort of think about physical changes versus chemical changes. And, you know, the idea there is if I dissolve salt in water, uh, is a chemical change happening? Is a chemical reaction happening? Does it still taste like salt water? If I evaporate off the water, would I still be left with a salt, you know, solid? So think about that and try to explain that in your own words. For the second question here, here we've got a picture of decane. Um, and this is a hydrocarbon. This is very similar to some of the stuff that we were talking about in lecture today um, when we we're talking about soap. And we had this sort of phrase, like dissolves like. So things that are nonpolar, right? So this would be a very nonpolar molecule. Things that are nonpolar are gonna interact with other things that are nonpolar. Things that are polar are gonna interact with other things that are polar. So we talked about soap. Right, and so soap has a nonpolar chain, but then it has a polar end. In this case, this decane does not have that polar end, so it's all nonpolar. And then we're asked to combine decane, right, with our different liquids from part um, six. So hexane, butanol, propanol, and methanol, those are our liquids A, B, C, and D. And the first thing we want you to do is identify their polarity. So do you think hexane, go back and look at the structure, is polar, somewhat polar, or nonpolar? Do you think methanol is polar, somewhat polar, or nonpolar? So categorize these, and then you're going to use this sort of idea of like dissolves like to say, well, do I think hexane will interact with decane? You know, are they both similar? Are they both nonpolar? Um, or do they, you know, have more polar versus nonpolar character? So uh, work on that. 
Question number three, describe the evidence that allowed you to assign polarities. So again, this is all that, that reasoning. Why do we say something is nonpolar? Why do we say something is polar? And I think that SOAP example, again, illustrates a lot of that nonpolar versus polar character. Revisiting initial ideas is the next section. So here we're going to compare our model of sugar from the pre-lab to, you know, the way that we imagine sugar dissolving now. Um, if there's, you know, no differences, that's okay. Uh, you can write that, but um, try to find your similarities, find your differences, and, and definitely write those out. All right, so the next section is our CER table. And for this, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of these this time. And the first one, basically what I'm trying to do here is, is ask you some questions or guide your thinking with some, some prompting questions, leading questions um, to fill this out. So the first one here that we need to, to work on, covalent molecules break apart from each other, but their chemical bonds remain intact upon dissolution. So the evidence of that, sugar does not conduct electricity when dissolved in water. And the reasoning sort of, you know, that I want you to sort of explain is, I want you to think about what must be present in a solution for it to conduct electricity and where those ions would come from, right? So um, think about that. For the next section, so this page is all the CER stuff. So the first question is, what's the evidence um, that ionic bonds present in a solute break upon dissolution? So again, you know, what is our evidence that ions form in solution? Uh, conducts electricity, right? And then the reasoning here, explain what's going on, why this evidence suggests this claim. For the next one, I'd really encourage you to think about taste, right? So taste, I think, is going to be the key for the second box. For the third box, um, here we're really starting to talk about those intermolecular forces, right? Between our solute, which would be our salt, um, and the solvent, which would be water. So it's here it says, Upon dissolution, intermolecular bonds form between molecules or ions of the solute and molecules of the solvent. And the evidence is that the solutes form homogeneous mixtures with the solvent. They do not settle to the bottom, even after long periods of time. So that sort of suggests, right, that those solute particles, they're floating around in the solution. They're sort of suspended in the solution. And we want you to sort of explain what's going on. Why are those solutes not settling to the bottom? What's holding them up? What are they, how are they interacting with the water? The last one here, substances that have similar, similar polarity or lack of polarity dissolve in each other. So the question here, the evidence that I'm looking for would be what compounds did we see dissolved in water? What co compounds did we see dissolved in hexanes? And how are their polarities similar or different, right? Um, and then the reasoning here would be sort of explaining why certain compounds dissolved in water, why certain compounds dissolved in hexanes. The last thing for this lab is lab homework is this question um, about scientific models. And it says, provide a small particle explanation for this observation. And the observation is, when you increase the temperature of a solvent, the solute will dissolve more quickly. So we really want you to think about this from a small particle point of view. One, what happens when I increase the temperature of a solvent? What's that gonna do on a small particle level? Then two, how would that increase, you know, the, the rate at which the solute dissolves? How is the increase in temperature directly related to, you know, this particle does this, this particle does this, um, to the overall observation that the solute dissolves more quickly? So again, this is a great question, I think. I really enjoy this question. So spend some time on that. And that's it for Lab 5.